Hello and welcome to the Man Cave here at Whistle Vistas in beautiful suburban San Diego, California. You'll notice I have two motorcycles here, one to my left, the 2014 BMW S1000R, the one to my right, the 2017 Aprilia Tuono 1100 factory. What I want to do today is a quick comparison between the two. I've uh, come into the ownership of three motorcycles. That's at least one too many and one has to go and I've made the decision that it's going to be the BMW. So I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison analysis here between the two machines. A lot of parallels, some differences. Let's just see what we come up with. So let's talk about those specifications as published by the manufacturers. I didn't do any independent testing on this and I think the manufacturers tend to adhere to a uh, pretty close scientific standard. I'm going to use my cheat sheet here and uh, read off of that. To my left is the 2014 BMW S1000R, 999 cc's, 160 horsepower at 1100 RPM, 83 pounds feet of torque at 9250 RPM. On my right is the Aprilia Tuono 2017 model year, 1077 cc's, 175 horsepower at 11,000 RPM and 89 pounds feet of torque at 9,000 RPM. Very closely matched, actually. Uh, in terms of riding characteristics, I'd say there's a little more torque down low available with the V4 configuration. Uh, however, there's a smoothness and a roll on with a inline four that's hard to deny. Uh, in terms of how it affects riding performance, you're going to have to go to a better motorcycle rider than I am to be able to really delve into what that means in terms of actual riding dynamics. Uh, the way above my care, uh, capabilities, both of these are very fun to ride. Okay, let's carry on a little bit. Uh, quick shifter. Yes, they both have quick shifters. They both allow you to shift up while you're riding without using the clutch on increasing throttle. Both of them work quite well. The throw for that on the Tuono is a little longer. I'm going to say it's an inch and a half or a couple of inches to engage that. On the BMW, it's just a tap and it pops right up into that next gear very nicely. Both, in my opinion, very well engineered. I very, I, in fact, I don't think I can recall a single time when I've missed an upship uh, upshift, excuse me, an upshift, an upshift on either machine. Auto blipper, not on the 2014 BMW. There is no auto blip. You've got to use the clutch to go down through the gearbox. Not that that takes any way uh, something from the riding dynamics. It is kind of fun to do that manual matching of the throttle. There is an auto blipper available on the Tuano. Uh, excuse me, not available, but standard on the 2017 Tuono factory, and it's very well engineered. As you're uh, gearing down, you can drop down through the gears, and once again, I've not had any false uh, issues or, or between gears come up with this machine on that auto blipper, and it's great. You'll hear it rev match when it's coming down. It's, it's really nice and works great that way. Weight. Again, very, very close. Uh, listed by the manufacturers, the S1000R is supposed to weigh 452 pounds. The Aprilia Tuono 1100, 461 pounds. So you're talking, uh, what is that, nine pounds difference. Very, very close. And I don't know what the factory tolerances are. And again, I haven't found that really affecting the riding dynamic. Seat height on the S1000R is 32 inches, listed a straight 32 inches. On the Aprilia Tuono, listed 32 and a half inches, 32.5 inches. And it's a bit taller, it's a bit taller. So you're a little more, uh, if you're a person of, uh, let's say, average height. I'm five feet, 10 inches tall, 180 pounds, and uh, have about a 30 to 31 inch inseam and you can feel a little bit extra height here. Again, very close, so close as to be almost uh, indiscernible. 
tires. 120 in the front, 190 in the back for the BMW, likewise 120 in the front, and 200 in the back for the Aprilia Tuono. So a little wider rear tire, rear section tire on the Tuono. I don't know what that aspect ratio is, but uh, if you like the back end uh, looking of a bike and you like that big fat tire, well, the Tuono is going to win aesthetically anyway. Gas tank, uh, 4.6 gallons. I'm going to give you all U.S. measurements. You're going to have to do your own uh, conversion into metric. Sorry, folks. Too old to teach this new, this old dog <laughs> the new, uh, new tricks. Uh, 4.6 gallons with a approximately one gallon uh, reserve, which is going to give you 40 miles, 30, 40 miles, uh, at least on the uh, BMW. 4.88 gallons on the Aprilia and a reserve of approximately the same uh, amount. That is uh, uh, four liters or, or about a gallon. The Aprilia is, in my riding experience, if you want to talk about differences, the Aprilia is quite a bit thirstier than the BMW. So if you own an Aprilia, you're going to be going into a Tuono Aprilia, you're going to be going into the gas station more than you will with this machine. How much more is directly related to that throttle wrist. Uh, the more you're on it, the more you're driving it spiritedly, riding it spiritedly, the more uh, gasoline you're going to use. So it is what it is. You, um, if that's an issue, if a gallon of gasoline or its price is an issue, then you probably should not be considering either of these machines. They're not the most economical as far as fuel uh, level is concerned. Okay, last couple of specifications I want to get into. The last couple of specifications is the uh, steering head angle. Now, um, I find this a little bit hard to believe, but again, I'm going with the manufacturer's specification. BMW, 65.2 degrees, 65.2 degrees. Tuono, 27 degrees. And maybe I've got that specification wrong. Somebody can uh, comment down below if they wish about that. But that's a huge difference. And it would explain what, in my opinion, is the biggest difference in the riding dynamic between these two machines. And that is, of the two, in terms of agility, turn in, ability to fall into a corner, I think the Tuono is that much better than the Beamer. Does that mean that the Beamer is unwieldy, doesn't want to turn? It does not mean that whatsoever, but I would give the Tuono that edge, that edge in the handling department. The last thing to mention, and again, this is how close these machines are, and it's, this one is kind of counterintuitive. The uh, BMW is supposed to be 56.7 inches of wheelbase and the Tuono 57 inches of wheelbase. So having said what I just said, I'd give the Tuono a slight edge in terms of the handling agility. One would think that the wheelbase would actually be reverse, that this one would be slightly shorter than this one, but not the case. So those are the dry specifications. I'll try to put a, a little chart of these. Uh, let's put it this way. I'll try and put a little chart of these in the description area of this vlog. But uh, those are the dry specifications. And what struck me as I looked through them was how similar they are. They're, they're more similar than they're dissimilar. So someone with a little better insight or uh, engineering understanding of the dynamics of the two machines may be able to do better as to explaining how and why they are as different as they are in the riding experience. So there you have the dry old factory specs. Let's go to a little discussion of the ergonomics. Let's, let's move on to the next subject. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the ergonomics. Specifically, how does it affect of a rider, a motorcycle rider of my stature and height? And obviously, if you're taller or shorter, it's going to be a little bit different, but uh, let's give it a try here. First of all, um, let me hold my little sound recorder out of the way and uh, get on the machine. And here you have my riding 
position or my stop, let's say my stop at a stoplight position. I don't know if you'll be able to see my feet, but I can just almost flat foot, not quite, not quite flat foot. I'm leaned a little bit uh, forward. I'm over the front fork. I'm looking down at the instrument panel, but still in a relatively upright position. Let's look at the, uh, let's call it the rider triangle, right? I think that's what the fancy term the uh, motorcycle journalists use. And you can see that this portion, my opinion, is uh, closely related to the sport bike uh, counterpart uh, sister, if you will, or brother, of this machine, which is the RSV version of the uh, four-cylinder. And I've got a fairly aggressive uh, bend in my knee here, but overall quite comfortable. Other parts of the ergo ergonomics, or let's say the rider conveniences, are the switch work for changing ride characteristics, and they all fall readily to hand once you get them memorized, you can use them quite well. Uh, a rider convenience factor on the Tuono is cruise control. Uh, I really thought that uh, cruise control was something I wouldn't necessarily need or like that much on a motorcycle, but guess what? If you're riding on the freeway, that cruise control is a pretty nice deal. So here's about my uh, riding position. Just a very little, but a slight amount of weight oh, on my uh, wrists and fairly aggressive bend point at my knee down to the uh, shifter on, on this side. So there you have it. Now let's check out the Beamer. Okay, BMW riding ergonomics and a little discussion about the rider amenities. I'm going to call them the rider amenities. All right, first, get on this. Again, I'm going to pull this recording unit out of my pocket so I can do so. And uh, I get a little... Let's look at the uh, camera. I get a little closer to flat foot on this machine. I, in fact, I am flat footed. So there's that uh, half inch difference of the seat height little closer to flat footing here. Uh, the other thing is looking at the rider ergonomics, little less of a bend, a little less aggressive as set up from the factory, a little less forward lean. And uh, that, those two feelings or those two ergonomic settings as calibrated by the factory may explain why the, why the Tuono feels a little more agile than this machine does. This one feels a little more stretched. You do feel a little more stretched out, and that may be why the uh, Tuono feels like it wants to fall into corners a little bit better. But uh, you can see the uh, uh, triangle, I'm going to call it, is a, a trifle more relaxed. Uh, there's almost uh, no weight on my wrists, just um, just a, a very, very small amount, and uh, riding position is quite comfortable. Uh, not to say that the Tuono is uncomfortable, but just a, a small amount for a rider of my height and weight, just a small amount more aggressively situated. The other thing, the switch gear is very nicely laid out, and it comes to one of the biggest differences between the two machines, sort of interesting, in that this machine has what's called semi-active or active uh, suspension. That means that there's a computer, the, uh, you can see the wire coming from the shock absorber here. The computer actually, when you set the riding mode, and there are three of them, it's uh, uh, rain, road, and race. Uh, there is a fourth, dynamic. You can go into dynamic mode. And they do alter the engine mapping as they do on all motorcycles, but they also, set the suspension uh, to match each riding mode. You can set this on road soft, and some of our backcountry roads here in San Diego are pretty unimproved. They're not the greatest. Uh, in fact, on a stiff machine, you can be almost tossed out of the seat on occasion on a couple of uh, marks or, or potholes in the road. This machine 
works very well that way. I would say if there's one thing that's kind of interesting about the two machines is that in 2014, BMW had active suspension, computer control 2017, flash forward 2017, and even though this is Olin's uh, suspension, about the best you can get, it is not computer controlled. You cannot adjust that uh, suspension on the fly as you can with this machine. You have rider modes, I forgot to mention those. Again, apologize for the cars. You have rider modes on this, of course, that alters the engine mapping. You've got a high degree of tunability with uh, both of these machines via ABS, anti-wheelie, traction control. But uh, this capability of setting that suspension response on the fly is very, very nice. So, for instance, if you're going on the freeway on either machine, you can just uh, drop it into cruise control, rip along, and set it at a firmer setting, and the machine's very responsive and quite comfortable. Get off into back roads where there are liable to be potholes and heaves in the road surface. This one in the soft suspension mode will be a much more comfortable ride, not necessarily performance-wise, but much more comfortable ride than that of the Aprilia. Uh, one other thing that this machine has is it has heated hand grips. Now you say in California, look, you guys always live in uh, summertime, sorry, uh, except for this year we've had uh, about uh, three months of rain, but you guys always live in summertime. Why do you need heated grips? Well, I must say that was my initial reaction. Came on the machine and I thought, eh, why not? Not too bad. The first time I used them, I was converted. Brisk, cool morning, turn on those heated grips. They work quite well. In fact, the high setting on this Beamer is almost too high. Your hands will sweat inside your gloves if you're wearing uh, thicker gloves. So even uh, maybe back east or in areas with snow and really cold mornings, someone might use the uh, high setting. I never have. I've, used, I've started off with a high setting and in one or two minutes switched it right down to the low and been very comfortable and uh, quite pleasantly surprised as to what that means in terms of the riding ergos. But uh, as you can see, these two machines, while on specification quite close together, um, there are some subtle differences in their rider positioning and perhaps the uh, rider philosophy. I would just paraphrase this particular part of the vlog by saying that I think the Tuono tends a little more to the sporting side and the Beamer tends a little more to, I'm not going to call it cruiser side, but the open road side. So there you have that part. Last thing to talk about is looks, aesthetics. And we're going to tread there. We're going to tread lightly there because everybody's got an opinion about that. Okay, for this part of the vlog here, uh, the comparison between the Tuono and the S1000R, we're going to use a handheld camera and a direct mount mic. Uh, we're going to scoot around these and take a look. First part to look at, of course, is the front. This is the part that you see coming at you. Again, pardon for the cars. I live in an active neighborhood. Uh, the Beamer gets a lot of flack because of that uh, Popeye front end. People complain of the two sizes. With uh, typical uh, engineering eff efficiency, the uh, German engineers declare, well, that's the best way to have set this up at the time to achieve the occupied, or let's say to achieve the uh, intention of having right time, uh, nighttime, uh, illumination but people say oh hate that uh, Popeye look and yeah you got to kind of get used to it but uh, that is a big difference on the other hand the Aprilia gets very high marks for this front end people say it's beautiful and it is I think uh, we might all concede that uh, that Italian flair for design received uh, full attention when it came to making the front end of this uh, Aprilia, this particular uh, 
model, uh, Tuono 1100. All right, let's fly around these and take a look. And we will fly around. I'm going to let you form your own opinions, really. There's uh, perhaps some discussion about the use of colors on this these machine. BMW had other color options available. I went with this red. I think there is a, um, a color scheme that they have for it. I can't recall what it is at the moment, but uh, I went with the red and I think overall it works out uh, quite nicely, as a matter of fact. Never been tempted to change the stock muffler on this machine. I think it sounds quite good as stock and has a great little burble on the override. Uh, those straight fours have a very distinctive engine note anyhow. It has a great little burble on the override that I like a whole lot. Okay, let's go over here and check out uh, Tony Thunder, the 2017 Aprilia. And you'll note the stylized Aprilia lettering on the side of the machine. This machine, I was tempted to change the stock uh, muffler for an Akrapovich. There are a couple of reasons for that. One is that that stock muffler is really unattractive. It's very big and they all had to get bigger by the way, uh, in the 2016-2017 model years because of European regulations. But uh, putting that on the back of it really lets that V4 engine note get out. And of course, with the factory, you get the non-pillion seat or that fared adapter on the back that looks quite good. So, I'm going to just, I'm just going to declare it to the favor of Italy here and say that uh, in my opinion, just on an aesthetic level, I do like the look of that Aprilia Tuono. I think they did a good job. Could they do better? I'm sure they could, but that is one beautiful machine. Now that's going to sound like I'm condemning or uh, not liking the way the Beamer looks, which is absolutely not so. In fact, I think it's a, still a magnificent looking machine and the right balance of black and uh, red components give it just enough of that sinister appeal that uh, we all like nowadays. Okay, there's your aesthetic comparison of the two machines. I'm going to leave it to the audience to come to their own final conclusion about uh, which one they think actually is the better looking. There's a uh, beautiful Italian opera that goes, that is called Questo Quello, which means this one or that one, I believe. Correct me, my Italian friends, if I'm wrong. And you would be hard pressed to choose between these two. They're both wonderful machines. In my instance, the Beamer is going to a new home and that's why I wanted to get this comparison between the two done before it does leave the Cooper garage here at Wistful Vistas in beautiful suburban San Diego, California. Thanks for tuning in. Wish you all well.